and you can use your own embassies and you can use online bank accounts and then basically start using this ERS as, as a platform to run your business virtually without having any border limitations. Let's build together this kind of network, this kind of community of virtual business. Welcome to the Borderless Podcast, your guide to traveling, investing, and living beyond borders, where we talk about living the life that you want to live, where you want to live it. From beautiful San Miguel de Allende, smack in the middle of Mexico, with your hosts, Jonathan Lockwood and James Guzman. Welcome to the Borderless Podcast, traveling, investing, and living beyond borders. This is that podcast where we talk about living outside of the box, living outside your borders, be they international, be they psychological. And uh, my name is Jonathan Lockwood. I'm here with James Guzman. Hey, James. Hey. Hey, how's it going? We come from, uh, well, we both come from the United States, but today right. we're coming from our new home, which is San Miguel de Allende in, right. in the uh, high desert of, of central Mexico. Mm-hmm. Today's Borderless Podcast, we're going to be talking about this new Estonia e-residency program. I'm particularly interested in this myself. And uh, so the guy who seems to be spearheading this, his name is Casper Korgis. He is the director of the Estonia e-residency program. He is a 27-year-old Estonian. He received his higher education in the UK in e-business and innovation and returned to Estonia in 2011 through the Estonian president's supported program, Talents Return Home. Today, Casper is the director of the e-residency program and leading a team of seven people in the first ever Estonian government startup. Welcome, Casper Korgis. (laughs) <laughs> hello, hello. It's it's nice how you pronounce it, my uh, last name, Korjus, because in Estonian uh, it's Korius, and Korius means like dead, rotting animal. But... Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> if you want, we, we can keep like... it gorgeous because gorgeous sounds gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, so I like it more. <laughs> so, I, so the, the actual pronunciation is Korius. Korius, yeah. Dead, rotting animal flesh. <laughs> All right. Korjus, man. I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay, very good. So, uh, Casper, you're 27 years old. You went to school in the UK. And then I noticed in the bio that you sent, you said you returned to Estonia in 2011 through the president's program, Talents Return Home. I mean, couldn't you have gone home if you wanted anyway? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, But the problem of Estonia, what uh, Estonia has had for several years is that all the young people are going abroad to other EU countries because there are no limitations and uh, perhaps some sometimes better education and better living standards. And then, uh, yes, the president had one campaign uh, of web page or where you people put their CVs and then Estonian companies contacted them and asked uh, to return. And I, I just put my CV there. And uh, after like a few years, actually, uh, I was, I was used <laughs> as one example to, uh, to come back home and to work in Estonian telecom. So, um, so yeah, but I, I wouldn't say that, uh, uh, I could have come before, but, uh, but of course, when you're living in the UK, then uh, you have new possibilities there and new relationships there. And uh, then perhaps it is just more difficult to return. But okay. through this program, it made more sense. Gotcha. Okay. So by hook or by crook, you ended up back in Estonia there. And uh, so this Estonian e-residency program, we've been hearing a lot about. Why don't we start out with this? Uh, there are some misconceptions about this. What is this yeah. e-residency program not? Uh, <laughs> what, it, what it is not is that it is not anything related to citizenship as such. So e-residency is that you Estonia is giving digital identification, uh, i.e. digital ID card to anyone in the world who desires. At least they have the possibility to do, apply it. Uh, and uh, and this digital ID card doesn't have like any picture on it, so it is not for travel document. It is you can't buy alcohol from shop, you can't vote with it. It just gives you access on Estonia uh, digital world, which Estonia offers today. And uh, and for Estonians, this digital world has been there for like last fifteen years already. So Estonians, uh, when it got independent uh, approximately twenty years ago, uh, it developed it all infrastructure, all IT from scratch, and the uh, ID card has been used since then. And for Estonians itself, it's nothing new. But now we just opened up those gates to all the people around the world and called this program e-residency that everybody can now access this digital world and get benefits, what Estonians do. 
Okay. So just to be clear, when the, the term e-residency, it does not mean online or electronically you can become a resident of Estonia. It's like a virtual residency or an e-residency of sorts that has to do with business. Is that correct? Uh, it is often correct, yes, that it doesn't relate to actual... you. You can't apply citizenship no. online. You yeah, still need I mean. to do that. Yes, right. but the second part, there are other applications also of e residency which are not related to business. Uh, I would divide the applications into like three parts of uh, three, uh, all the user stories I would put in three parts. First part, perhaps, is the actual people who visit Estonia, uh, who like to travel here uh, as a tourist or as a student. Uh, then this ID card for them means that it's just their life is easier in Estonia. You can buy, uh, uh, you can enter into like some shops, uh, you can get discounts from shops using this ID card. Uh, you can, uh, you can top off your public transport on that ID card and etc. So the life in Estonia is very much all digitalized uh, and uh, you can be part of this while you're traveling here. So this is just one example, one case of why e-residence is good uh, for people who sometimes visit Estonia, and this helps them hear out. Uh, and then there are two other parts, if I'm already into that field, sure. <laughs> uh, how e-residence is useful. Uh, one, one thing is, and what is the most uh, interesting one so far has been, yes, business, like you mentioned. And uh, business... Uh, what we have discovered now after like being half a year uh, running this project is that uh, the most beneficial uh, uh, for this is uh, people from let's say developing world where uh, where you you don't have like EU access on business in general so easily or bank accounts and what e residency gives you is it gives you access to EU market you can uh, do within one click open uh, uh, company second click you can uh, in theory at least register a bank account then you can get Stripe or PayPal account and you can start making money online making online businesses wherever you are whenever you are and on background we have all digitalized accountancy systems and we'll try to automate them also so that basically if you're a freelancer if you're an entrepreneur uh, if you're a small company now it's possible for you to actually be very cost efficient and run your company virtually everywhere you are, get access to EU market, EU uh, funds, uh, and uh, internationally people can start paying, start paying for your services. So this is very clear, very concrete case how EU residency is very useful and why it has got such a huge attention in the world. All right, good. So... Um you said there were three parts. Okay, yes. so the first one is kind of for students or people that are living there. It's kind of a discount mm-hmm. card. The second one yeah. was for business, uh, people that want to do business there. And wh- yeah. so what was the third? The third part is uh, a bit, that sense, more complicated. Mm. That uh, it's very difficult to say exactly what are the services for third part but mm. 35% of uh, today's early subscri- subscribers of e-residency uh, desire it because they want to have some kind of belonging they want this e-citizenship e-residency this e-state which actually gives them like some kind of borderless community freedom uh, some new identity some new belonging into which people can communicate which are can uh, can share the things and somehow uh, show the new level the transparency level of the state and uh, all those buzzwords which go around this topic uh, and people just demand this he residence card to belong into this group it's a new group identity <laughs> yeah 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 we can go and many people like feel uh, uh, somehow because of their own local governments, bureaucrats, and all the, like, let's say, negative things, what's going on, and limitations, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then it's kind of giving the new identity that I don't need today to belong to my own country only anymore. I can choose which countries I belong to, yeah. and uh, this makes them somehow feel free, feel better. Yeah, well, let me ask you a question. You know, I, the first time that I heard about this e-residency, I read it in an article and the article was uh, entitled something like, is this the end of the nation state? Trying to say that this is... So how would you respond to the title of that article? It's, it's very interesting. And the, what is the most interesting, perhaps, it is that when I went to U.S. Uh, during December, then uh, 
I discard whenever I mentioned, uh, of course, in Silicon Valley, whenever I mentioned that I was from Estonia, then people started uh, started explaining to me what is EU residency. I was in Uber, I was in restaurants and bars. People <laughs> knew about EU residency. They were telling me what is EU residency, and this was fascinating because the term EU residency has has made people actually think somehow bigger, somehow. Uh, physi- physiologically, so- sociologically, in other ways which normally we don't think perhaps so much. And uh, that is the cool thing. And if you ask uh, about the end of nation state, then uh, definitely I would say that uh, this is a good way how we can start conversations, what it could be in future and how we should live in the future and what e-residency can be here. Today, e-residency is so early beta concept <laughs> that we can't say that what it is or what it isn't because it's just a startup which we <laughs> try to make something to happen. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm guessing that what we will probably be focusing on primarily is item number two. It's a great opportunity for people yep. to be able to do business, particularly people who are interested in doing online yes. business, online entrepreneurs. And in that, in that realm, yes. you've got our juices flowing because that's right up the, uh, the alley of the Borderless podcast and the people who listen to it. The new group identity concept is appealing to them as well. So you had mentioned in having this e-residency, it's easy to open a company and then you said – uh, theoretically, a bank account. What did you mean by that? Yes. I meant by that, that is a good question from you, uh, because I need to hold myself back also, because many things at the moment uh, are still in so beta mode that uh, don't work so properly or are so in bad user experience that uh, it is just difficult to understand for foreigners. Uh, I'll, I'll, before I answer a question, I'll go back a bit, a little bit and give you the concept of how it started. When I started to run this project from September and then on October I made this launch page where you could early subscribe yourself and within like 20, first 20 hours we received 5,000 plus applicants who desired e-residence from 150 different countries. So and then it started to grow and already from December we, the government accepted the law of e-residence and we, uh, we received the first e-residency card to British uh, journalist Edward Lucas. And... Uh, and after that, we have uh, started to uh, more more deeply going into the field of where and what do we need to do in order for years to work out like like a normal startup, you know, building up its business, trying to do it together with its customers and uh, developing services. So, and now we have some kind of understanding already that uh, what it means in terms of services and what it means in terms of regulations and laws. And coming back to your question now, that what is then about bank bank accounts and etc. There are many laws which Estonia need to be very critically access and see whether we need to change and what we need to change. And one of them are related to business laws. For example, at the moment there are limitations of sending English documents into our business register. Uh, sometimes you need to meet notaries. Sometimes you need to meet uh, tax office. And sometimes at the moment it is official that you need to have one face-to-face meeting with bank in order to get a bank account. So today you can't get the online bank account yet. But within one year time, uh, I will do my best to make all this happen, that all this virtual business environment could be possible, that uh, all the main steps for, uh, for freelancers, for entrepreneurs or internationally can actually nev- uh, run this company, EU entity, EU company, without ever need to visit actual Estonia. And that is the goal. Okay, yeah, this, this is what I was advised, was that if I wanted to do this, the one thing is at this point I would need to travel to Estonia and probably spend about three weeks there to get something established. Does that sound right? Yes, Estonia is very beautiful, so I would recommend still you to do it. But if... Uh, Actually, in like two, three weeks' time, I can't promise exactly date, but in one month' time at least, uh, we will open up all Estonian foreign embassies. There are 38 foreign embassies around the world. And then what it happens that uh, you can start applying e residency online at uh, slash e residency. Uh, then uh, you can Google it, you can find it. Then uh, you can fill in all the application form, pay the 
uh, state fee, which is uh, 50 or 80 euros, depending where you want to pick it up, and choose your pickup location. So you can choose your pickup location, whether it's in Japan, US, or EU, or Estonia. And Mexico? Oh, fuck, I think we don't have embassy in Mexico. I need to find okay. out where it's nearest. Uh, we will have a okay, list of all, right. uh, all the countries and on the internet. And then, okay. then uh, once Estonia then starts processing your application, uh, there are many, many background checks of whether your criminal records, tax reports. Oh, or shoot. The now, I'm, now it's over yeah. for me. <laughs> So uh, if those uh, give you red, uh, let's say green light, that everything is positive, then uh, you will receive an email, well done, congratulations, you can now become an e and come pick up your card. And then you have a face-to-face meeting in Estonian foreign embassy where you give your fingertips and you authenticate yourself with your local passport. And then the face-to-face meeting is held uh, very strong and, uh, and then you receive a card which actually starts working in a couple of days' time. So then you don't need to visit Estonia twice anymore, and it's a little bit easier. Okay, well, I mean, you know, we were kind of joking about that, the background check thing, but uh, what are some of the things that might disqualify somebody from this e-residency program? Uh, this is officially even I don't know that. Okay. Uh, because uh, those is, this is like secret police things, mm. and uh, all the police from different governments are working together to find to fight against terrorism and all that. Mm-hmm. So they have their own databases, their own checks. What I know is that uh, this is as serious background check as if you desire Estonian real citizenship. Okay. So, and for getting citizenship, there are many different things, and basically they're using the same databases. Okay. So, y- you can open a business, you can open a company. Are you able to share with us what the different types of companies are? What are their legal designations? Do you know? Yeah. Uh, I can share a little bit uh, as far as my knowledge goes. Is that uh, basically you can have like. Uh, Main thing is Osa Ühing in Estonian, which means uh, private limited company. Right. And uh, it's, just, it's the same as in the UK. And then you have a limited company, which is, uh, which is uh, where you have shareholders. Right. And it's for a bigger corporation. Then you need a bigger amount of money also. But to open up a normal Osa Ühing private limited company, uh, then uh, it's, it just takes approximately 15 minutes on internet to do it. And it's fairly easy. Yeah, and so the, uh, I suppose if you're uh, opening up a corporation, you also need a uh, Estonian bank account to go along with it. Uh, you can open up a company uh, without actually having a bank account. You can have some kind of uh, limited version of that, but then uh, it lasts, for example, something like six months, and you still, at the moment, you yeah, need to visit Estonia to get this. But you can pay this uh, small fee, some some kind of something, uh, twenty, thirty euros, uh, to. Uh, using uh, also credit cards, also like uh, bank transfers. So you don't need to open up, at, you don't need. But of course, if you want a uh, VAT number, for example, also and bank account, and at the moment you need to visit Estonia anyway, so it is not the most asset free at the moment. And uh, we'll try to keep this communication as clear as possible, although we can't control media, and media is uh, quite optimistic <laughs> and telling all the stories, but currently... We just opened up applications to start working together with our end users, with our clients, with you, to know where do we need to go, what services we need to tell, what laws we need to change. So we are taking it very step by step. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like uh, this kind of just opens you up to the Estonian market. Um, do you think that you'll be able to use this e-residency in order to open up a bank account in uh, different countries? Say Hong Kong, for instance? Yes, and... And this is a very good question, actually. And uh, to understand those companies win who understand that e-residency is nothing more than a platform which Estonia enables for you to build up your own services on top of that. And I'll bring some examples. I'll bring two examples. One, just yesterday, I met one company who is offering um, some certificates for C engineers. And they are they have like, I don't know, training sessions in London where you need to travel and be there two weeks and then travel back home and company pays loads amount of money for them. So what they can do now is they will open up an online training system where you can, they will do e-resident integration. That means that if you want this 
certificate. Now you make yourself an e-resident. You authenticate yourself on that online service and you'll do all online tests and then you get certificate which is digitally signed both by you and by the authority. And that means that you never ever have to go to this London conference for two weeks and stay in the hotels anymore because you can do everything online. And why it's possible? It's possible because first time ever it's government issued digital identity. Not that you log in using your Facebook or LinkedIn, but using your government identity. And this needs to be by law, at least in EU, accepted by all the member states. And this is a very strong case. Because now we can speak that all the services can start moving to digital world. This is one example. I'll bring you a second example. In the US, I also visited the company Stripe, which is online payment service provider. So if you want to build a website, e-shop, selling some paintings... Uh, whatever you want to sell there, you want to start asking money. And people, if they want to pay you, you need to have this service provider integration, whether it's PayPal or Stripe. At the moment, Stripe, there are millions of people who want to use Stripe around the world, but they can't. Because uh, Stripe needs to go to individually every country to, uh, to do background checks and integrations to their local banks and everything, to have face-to-face meetings even sometimes. What they do now is that they will tell you, if you e- make yourself as an e-resident and you can start using from day one, i.e. they are outsourcing the face-to-face meetings, they are doing only integration with one Estonian bank and basically they can scale up around the world without actually needing to make specific integrations country by country and this is tremendous for them and those cases when companies start now to understand that wow that e-residency i will make this integration on my own services and uh, i will tell my customers to become e-resident and then it scales up and then actual benefits come out we're talking with casper Korius, director of the estonia e-residency program on the borderless podcast this is something people have been talking about a lot for several months now and it's very exciting probably very exciting to a lot of our listeners. We want to take just a minute here uh, to remind you that you are able to get involved in the Borderless Podcast conversation. If you go to borderlesspodcast.com, click on the Join Now button. After doing that, you'll get access to our Facebook page. And what else, James? And uh, you'll get an e-book that will uh, help you. You know, if you're you're thinking about living a a borderless lifestyle, you know, then we've got some material on there for free and also the online uh, group. And people like uh, Casper are on there that can help you get started. So if you, if you enjoy um, you know, this type of material, just you know, sign up for the mailing list. There. Right. And you know, we appreciate it. Lately, the last few weeks especially, I've been getting a lot of uh, private messages uh, from people saying they're really enjoying the podcast. So we appreciate that. Keep it up. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other thing you can do, of course, is uh, go to iTunes and uh, rate, review, and subscribe. We certainly appreciate that. <laughs> This week's Borderless Podcast is brought to you by The Condescending Group, your online leader in promoting unwarranted self-confidence. You know, our friends at The Condescending Group are doing a week-long feature on meditation for their site. It's a shocking collection of feel-good gurus from around the world, but the one that's getting a lot of attention is the guy who sort of turns meditation on its head. You see, instead of focusing on yourself in meditation, he encourages you to focus on other people. He says if you can really, really empty yourself and stop being judgmental about yourself, then it's a great opportunity to focus on the faults of other people. And that always makes you feel good, especially if you have little to no basis for self-esteem. By throwing all criticism, judgmentalism, and scrutiny on others, it can help you create the feeling that you yourself are actually deserving of the credit that you never earned. Racism, sexism, exploitation, homophobia, greed, ah... Unfairly criticizing others makes the world your unaccountable oyster. TheCondescendingGroup.com. The Condescending Group, they care more than you. So we're back on the Borderless Podcast, talking to Casper Korius, director of the Estonia e-residency program. We've talked about quite a few things. He showed us the categories uh, where this might be an interesting option for people, such as those who want to live in Estonia, those who want to do business there, and those who like the idea of a new sort of group philosophy or a group identity of belonging. So let's get back to this a little bit. We've talked about the idea of opening a business there, making it easy. Uh, what Share with us, Casper, what is the motivation? This might be obvious, but what is the motivation for Estonia to do this? Why do they yeah, want to do yeah, this? Yeah, it's a very good question, and it's not obvious, actually, because I'm thinking about that every day. <laughs> Why we're still doing 
doing? So, so, <laughs> what the hell am I doing? Uh, okay. Well, at the moment, when it all started, I had, I had any idea that it can go so big. So it was a huge surprise for me. I just started, thought that it's nice government startup. I'll try it out. So uh, what's the motivation? Um, well, definitely, yes. The basic motivation started as from Estonian existing businesses. There are like 20,000 Estonian businesses and many of them today, uh, uh, many foreigners are one of the shareholders of them. That means that because of one foreigner, everybody needs to sign all the documents on paper. But all the Estonians are using their ID cards to sign everything digitally. No one signs only anything on paper. So it was a clear thing that why we just don't give this card to our foreign shareholders so that they can be part of Estonia also and everybody wins out of this. This was the basic beginning point before it turned out to be that uh, let's do something bigger. And now when we are trying to do something bigger, then I would say two different aspects of how Estonia benefits. Uh, one aspect is definitely, we can't deny it, uh, marketing and all the bus. Because uh, eventually... It does matter. It does matter about foreign investments. It does matter about reputation. And uh, this e-residency, we haven't put any marketing costs. There's zero budget at all. It's just about Facebook likes, tweets, uh, articles. So, and uh, it's a nice way how one little country can actually make themselves appear. But to ask like clear benefits, then uh, when we go back to this business. Uh, the second category, the business, virtual business environment. Estonia can only then get big here if other companies see this as their opportunities, not as a competitor. How they can see it is just a hypothesis at the moment, but some ideas are there that uh, Estonia, what it can do, it's, let's say, concrete example. If you're a Ukrainian, for example, or let's say Malaysian, a bit even farther, if you're Malaysian, you want to start a company, then at the moment in Malaysia, it's very complicated. You can do it through EU, through Estonia. And uh, Estonia can actually uh, give real-time reports of that Malaysian entrepreneur, of his taxations, incomes and outcomes, to Malaysian himself and for Malaysian government. For example, let's take a hypothesis. That means Malaysian government can actually... Uh, benefit out of Estonian e-residency. Malaysia can now say that, oh, we have e-residency program here, which we have now 10 new thousand uh, Malaysians who bring foreign investments into our country. And now Estonia is also telling us how much they need to pay taxes in our country. So it's fabulous. And eventually Malaysia then starts promoting e-residency for their own citizens. If this will be placed and if we manage to do this, that actually countries see that e-residency is good for them because Estonia is not trying to take their citizens' taxations if it's not obligated to. Then the business model can be fairly simple. The business model for Estonia can be just monthly charge per card, for example, or monthly charge per Malaysian report which we are sending to Malaysia or to the person who desires it. And, uh, and once this user base is huge, like millions and millions of euros in the around the world, then these small amounts can contribute a huge amount altogether. Because let's remember, let's remember that Estonia, there is only 1.3 million people in Estonia, and there are only 20,000 or 25,000 active companies in Estonia. Imagine now if the world becomes borderless in digital world, where, which governments are offering, and imagine now if one government is the first who can offer the best virtual business environment around the world. We are not speaking about their 20,000 companies. We are speaking here 20 million companies who would today would like to establish and be there. And that means that governments are actually entering to the world where startups are today, that if you're lucky, you can scale up yourself and you can be a thousand times more richer, perhaps. Not 2% increase in GDP, but a thousand times, perhaps. And this is already a crazy world then. We can speak then how governments start to 
group together to cooperate or to compete, each government trying to find their own niche on the internet, which they can offer to their customers around the world. And this is interesting. Today, the business model is not exactly there yet. We have covered all our costs by state fee, which is 50 or 80 euros, depending on where you want to get this card. And this covers all the background checking, all the card printing, uh, exporting the card to other countries. And this is clear. Now, do you think how Estonia actually win in money-wise? We need to be more clear about what business we are going to do and uh, how to monetize it. And this is unclear today. So you, you have uh, helped us to understand why Estonia is interested in doing this and how it's actually working so, and why it shouldn't be considered a threat from other governments. Are you saying that if somebody uh, decides to get this e-residency program and become an a e-resident and start a business that they pay no taxes to Estonia? Today, I would say that e-residency itself it doesn't change the world which exists today. So today there are thousands of companies also in Estonia which are uh, owned by foreigners and it depends country on country how the taxation works. If uh, if some countries there are uh, double avoidance of double taxation agreements, then these hold for e-residents also. So the, for example, if you're a German, your activity, business activity is in Germany and your board is in Germany, then it doesn't matter that your entity or company is registered in Estonia, you still need to pay taxes in Germany. And then, of course, Estonia don't ask that kind of money. So, it depends on country specifics, which countries have which relationship to EU and to Estonia, and uh, it depends on the agreements. Yes. But what I, perhaps is important for Estonia also now to understand, to, to make this clear to everybody that... Uh, our purpose is not to start collecting other governments' tax money. This would be a very short-term run for e-residents. And after five years, we would be closed, most probably. But we need to find out how to automate that, how to make it clear and uh, easy for everybody to understand where they need to pay taxes and how much to. And uh, this is definitely one area which we need to improve. Yes, of course. So, I obviously... Uh, you know, my I'm, I'm a citizen of the United States, so yeah. I, I wouldn't think that somehow in creating a business in Estonia that that would mean I no longer have any tax obligation to the United States. What I'm asking is, in addition to that, would there also be a tax obligation to Estonia? It again depends on countries. Uh, if Estonia and the U.S. have good relation, which they are, then uh, there is double taxation avoidance that you don't need to pay on both countries. Okay, gotcha. I had also heard something about there being, and I don't, maybe you don't know about this. I know you don't know about a lot of the, the specifics, but yeah. are you familiar with a social security agreement between Estonia and the United States or no? No. Okay, very good. Someone had told me there was, and I found no evidence of that, so uh, I guess... Okay, I yeah. yeah, I don't know. That. I know that at the moment there is a lot of trouble. I have some friends in the U.S., who own companies which are Estonian companies and now they move to US and now they need to pay taxes also for those Estonian companies to US although there is nothing related to anymore in US but now as they are US citizens they need to pay for them so there are a lot of this kind of new hassle uh, which is around this uh, US and foreign companies and I don't know where it all leads and uh, and uh, I personally I personally can't yeah, go to too deeply into each country today. I More what I'm trying to do is building up the platform, and uh, I'll try to avoid that. Yeah, the, the bit of information that I had gotten on that, and I'm going to preface this by yeah. saying I've found no confirmation on it. It's just it came from a past borderless okay. uh, podcast uh, uh, interviewee mm -hmm. who seems to really know what she's talking about, about these subjects. She had told me that there was a social security agreement between the U.S. and Estonia such that, while, for instance, a lot of Americans might set up a company in a foreign district, they're still responsible for paying, you know, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of money every year toward their social security and their Medicare and these various government uh, programs. Yeah, yeah. But that there was, she had told me that there was a relationship between the U.S. and Estonia that said, 
that you don't need to do that, and basically that the U.S. had an agreement saying whatever Estonia's Social Security program was is okay, therefore you don't have to pay them anymore, which is fantastic for Americans. Uh, but Estonia's claim is that, yeah, but if you don't live here, you don't have to pay into it. That just didn't sound right to me, and I found no confirmation yeah, of that. So yeah. anyway. Yeah. If you have more information, you can just send it to me, and I can try to find out also. I, I, I don't know either about this. Uh, are, is there any problem with uh, Americans' open bank accounts there? I've had some people to ask me that. Um, I guess they feel like uh, in a lot of places throughout the world, because of fact and stuff like this, they don't really want to deal with Americans. Is, is that a problem in Estonia? Uh, there is definitely some cases uh, because of the new laws and regulations that mm-hmm. some Estonian banks don't want to deal anymore with Americans mm-hmm. because America is asking so huge amount of paperwork and reporting to every you, every client which they have and eventually it just doesn't pay off. So what I can I can tell is definitely there are banks in Estonia which allow to do all that. And once we make regulations easier for them to do online, then of course it will be even more easier. But as a government, which at the moment I'm working for, uh, we can't go so far into the private sector and start telling what and whom the clients can or should be. It's up to every bank themselves to decide whether I give you this account or if I don't want to give you this account. And that's why I, we as e resident team also can't promise anyone that yes, if you want to access EU, then definitely you will get all the accounts because it is still bank's decision whether he sees that you're trustworthy or not. Yeah, as well it should be. But uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's the problem you know, with all these... Um, these new laws that have, you know they're passing in the United States, and it's it's make a lot of people don't realize that are in the United States that they're really uh, becoming like financial refugees <laughs> because people just don't want to deal with them anymore because they, you know mm-hmm. the the government wants all these very complicated forms and most of them are in English and uh, it's just it just doesn't make sense. So yeah, yeah. Casper, can can you speak to us about the banking system in Estonia? I'd also heard that. It's much better capitalized than the banks in most countries. Are you able to share with us anything about that? Uh, I can just share my own experience uh, uh, and comparison of some other countries. What I like about Estonian banking is that, uh, uh, in general, people see banks as uh, good institutions and friends which help you out and which are like good. And everything, all the transactions are done digitally using ID cards, uh, no limitations, uh, Everything is so fast, just takes a couple of seconds. And, uh, and the loans and all this capital market is also very easy to access. So I would say that uh, we are happy about the banking sector. Okay, great. What about encrypted emails or uh, you know, some sort of servers or things like that? Do you have access to that type of stuff as an e-resident? Yes. Uh, the basic technology behind e-residency ID card, digital ID identification card, there are threefold. First is authentication. There you have PIN number, a four-digit PIN number. You enter a card on your computer and then you're asked PIN number, uh, which is minimum four, maximum 16. So you enter this PIN number and you can enter the sites. Second um, techni- technological method is uh, digital signature. That means that there is minimum five-digit number, PIN two, which you enter the same way, and if you do that, then this paper is digitally signed, you can sign any documents, uh, and it is as valid digital signature as physical digital signature. That means, actually, if you and I have signed a document, and we have some disagreement, and we are going to court, and if you show the paper signed document, and if I show digitally signed document, then I win. Digitally signed in that sense is even stronger, because and now this just, it is it's sometimes difficult to understand uh, because we have been using that for 15 years. But in Estonia, if someone comes to me and I need to sign some contracts or some any papers on paper, then uh, I wouldn't personally sign it anymore because it just sounds so suspicious. Whether I, I would consider that he, will, he would like to, I don't know, change the date or change the contract itself or later on delete the contract or, or there is something suspicious there that he wants to do it on paper because on digitally there is a mark that you can't change that and you can't fake that and you need to have it your signature. Everybody knows because only you know those pin codes and no one other knows and you, you have the card. So even if I steal your card, I can't put your digital signature. So, and the third application is... Uh, 
like you said, sending encrypted files. And uh, this is the same way using your PIN2 number. I will need to put your personal identification code uh, and send some, some, uh, some uh, encrypt some file and only you with your ID card can decrypt it. And only you can see the, uh, see the content then. Okay, great. Now, it sounds like Estonia is trying to establish itself as, you know, this innovator in, in the internet and uh, e-business. Um, what are some other businesses that you have going on there? At the moment, for example, we had elections uh, two weeks ago, and uh, I was uh, then uh, in, uh, I think, in Netherlands, and uh, I elected in Netherlands, so we have online voting, and uh, from last elections, there were more than 116 countries uh, different countries where people, Estonians elected their parliament. So this is quite important and cool already to understand, especially when you consider your broad podcast that uh, Estonians are around the world, but they are still Estonians and they are taking part of Estonians, even elections from 116 different countries. So other thing which I not just now used uh, last week was uh, declaring my personal taxes. So in Estonia, there is minimum, uh, minimum wage that you don't need to pay tax and you can get your money back. So I declared taxes. It took me just, I, 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 I tried to uh, see how long it took. It took me just 27 seconds to declare my tax. And after two days, uh, I got my taxes wow. back. So it is as clear and why I need to uh, make sure why this is so fast. It's because as every Estonian and every e-resident has digital identification code. So like we have our first names, you are James, I'm Casper. We know who we are, you know. In internet at the moment, we don't know who we are. It's like random users. When in Estonia, everybody has their digital identification code, which means everybody has a unique code. And now all the private and public sector can start use, making uh, services for them. And why declaring taxes takes me 27 seconds is that all my uh, salaries, my pension funds, uh, my scholarships, uh, my bank loans, everything is shared for the tax agency using my digital identification code and it automatically uh, calculates how much taxes I need to pay or get back. That's why it just give me, gives me the full report and I just need to sign it and that's all. Okay, well, I was kind of more talking about the different companies that you have going on. I mean, Skype's out of uh, Estonia. What other companies do you have going on there? Uh, yes, at the moment, uh, one uh, very important one is TransferWise. Uh, yeah, transfer wise yeah i heard about yes, this yes it promotes at least to kill the banking sector it makes very uh, easy way how you can exchange currencies and uh, very clearly uh, monetized and very cheaply so if you have like yes i wanted i wanted to use that casper but i noticed uh, they don't uh, they don't presently uh, work with the mexican peso so uh, i'll have to wait yeah, until that happens hopefully soon uh, then a uh, very nice other example is Scrapcat, which was just uh, bought out uh, approximately 1 million uh, euros, I think. Uh, and the Scrapcat is a community for engineers to share all the uh, cat designs and all the other like uh, uh, graphical uh, engineering stuff uh, and to work together. So, and it's a community of if I'm not mistaken, over 3 million engineers, and it's very nice and nice nice user was, experience there. Uh, I'm sorry, G-R-A-B? C-R-A-B. Crabcat, okay. Okay. Well, why don't, you, why don't you share with us also a little bit about Estonia? You'd started to talk about it. Tell us where Estonia is. Estonia is a very, very small country uh, in, we would like to call it Northern Europe, <laughs> but... Actually, we are in the Northeast Europe. Uh, so on right hand side we have Russia. Uh, on top we have Finland, and uh, then on bottom we have uh, other Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. So uh, we are a northern country. We have 1.3 million people, 1 million them Estonians, 20% uh, of uh, Russians. Uh, then our national language is Estonian. We have loads of forest in Estonia, uh, lots of like nice sightseeing and our capital is Tallinn and one third of people are living in capital and uh, and uh, it's a country of 
digital forest it's likes to call itself so it's uh, it's all digitalized for years and years how it all started uh, all estonia has full access to wi-fi and there are all, everywhere is free wi-fi when you're in a bus or in airport or wherever you are uh, 4g everywhere and next year will be first to be in the world of 5g network covered so it yeah it tries and it has somehow managed to make some kind of this digital government and digital society uh, brand which it's living and uh, embracing and uh, and that's cool and uh, and for me it's also quite new thing because uh, Estonians as I said I've been using two services for years which I also something mentioned and then uh, it for us it was just everyday normal life and what the Eurosense has done Eurosense has made all our Estonians like make aware that this is actually not standard <laughs> around the world, what we are doing. Yeah, uh, this is right. something like different. Yeah. And uh, of course, we knew that. But after this bus, we start to really understand that, wow, yeah, that actually this is quite great and quite innovative. It's not standard <laughs> what you're doing here. You know, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, I am not one to promote the concept of government whatsoever. But, you know, we got to give credit where credit is due, at least at this particular time. I'm reading that Estonia's government is solvent. They have not issued any kind of sovereign debt in years. They balance their budget. Okay, and that's saying something yeah. in, in today's yeah. day and age. Estonia likes... Estonia, actually, actually, sometimes I feel it pushes too much in that uh, if some, there is some EU regulation, then Estonia doubles it up, make sure that we are clear that we are like very, very safe. Place. And when it comes yes, to also like debt, national debt, then Estonia has the lowest of in the world, I would say, uh, and uh, and in that sense, yes, it's it's a. I would say it's a good infrastructure in both uh, economic wise and uh, technological wise to make something big. And our leaders are very young. Our prime minister is just under thirty five years old, and uh, and uh, and he was elected again. And uh, and I'm twenty seven, and it's it's not so nice. It's quite normal that. People are actually young in Estonia. New generation has come here, and uh, and this makes things faster and things more like by default normal to have fully digitalized and fully like innovation everywhere. Innovation built in by day one. So in that sense, uh, yes, I would say it's good. But of course, there are many many parts. Estonia has been independent for just very little time, and there are also like uh, very negative sides of still like the poverty is still there. Many many families are living in poverty, and uh, and uh, then different cultural Estonians. I would say that culturally, perhaps, are not the strongest. Uh, many of them still uh, don't are not so tolerable <laughs> of different nations and cultures. And uh, this is definitely when when coming from UK also, which disturbs me personally. That uh, people need to be more friendly, <laughs> a bit more friendly in Estonia. Uh, but otherwise, I would say that yes, uh, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be Uh For other EU citizens, if somebody is already an EU citizen, what would be the benefits of them getting an e-residency? Well, EU is a very interesting case, and uh, because especially considering that EIDAS is one directive which EU starts accepting in two years' time, EIDAS means that uh, uh, all the EU national states need to start accepting strong authentication and digital signature met- methods. So... That means also that they need to start accepting e-residents, everything what they do, because they are also a student digital design. And this makes interesting, in this case very interesting in that sense that uh, we don't know how it all ends up, and whether some other EU states desire e-residency and using this as their platform. Or, uh, as I said before, they see as a competitor and they don't want to accept those. So it... It's, it's very unclear and we will see how it ends up. But what's sure today is that today already people benefit out of this e residence card. I just now, last week, I had one German and Austrian companies visiting us just to get e residency card because today you need to travel to Estonia. Uh, because uh, they have... They have loads of documents which they need to sign every day. They're sending packages and then there's documents front and back and everything. And, and there are different shareholders which they need to send around the world. And they're making themselves, all of them, digital ID card just for signing purposes. Because they, two companies, accept that we accept this as 
official signing method. And now they don't need to send paper documents and they are sending documents to each other and signing. So it is nothing related to Estonia. They are using this as a platform to enhance their business. So coming back to the question, what the EU countries win is it's up to them whether they see this as an opportunity to use this and leverage these services or they are fighting against and not allowing their people there and not allowing services. So we will see how it all ends up. I see. We've got a we've got a question that we like to ask people. Casper, James, you want to ask that? Sure. Yeah. So um, if you're talking to a younger version of yourself that's thinking about uh, being entrepreneurial or uh, you know getting out there and making some changes in the world, what's the best piece of advice that you would give? Best them? piece of advice today would be to subscribe yourself as an early subscriber of e-residence in our web page. Just leave the email there and I will keep keep you up to date of when our processes uh, are updated, when you can use your own embassies, when you can use online bank accounts and then basically start using this e-residence as a platform to run your business virtually without having any portal limitations. And uh, just be there Okay, be informed and uh, let's build together this kind of network, this kind of community of virtual business. Great. Well, I'm, I've signed up. I have my uh, email there. So, you know, if you're, you, I will you know, keep you posted. <laughs> yeah, we're, this is the Borderless podcast. We're promoting a borderless lifestyle. So, this seems to be, uh, you know, that's uh, this is what we're talking about. So, right. this, this it, is a great it, option. It sounds like things are changing rather rapidly. So, it could be in a few months, Casper, we need to have you back on. <laughs> yeah, it to is. To find out. It yeah, is let crazy. us know. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what website can they go to to find out more about this or get in touch with you and keep, keep up to date? You can write that down on your website, eston.com slash e-residence. You know, that works out just fine. This, you got to go yeah. to our website, to our uh, pod, uh, podcast yeah. notes for this yeah. podcast to figure out what the website is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you've been hearing about the Estonian e-residency program, and we've been talking with Kasper Koryus, director of the Estonia e-residency program. It's... An exciting time. It's a weird time for a lot of us here in the West as we th- see things that we think uh, are devolving. But there's some positive things happening in the world, and this might just be one of them for you. Thank you very much, Casper Koryus. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm really glad we had Casper on uh, the Borderless Podcast, James. I mean, uh, again, I've been it's been I've been encouraged to look at this as an option for my business and. If nothing else, I think it has dispelled some myths about this. Yeah, and you know, it's it's a good topic to keep on top of. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, we'll see how this shakes itself out. You know, maybe more countries will be doing this. It's just, uh, it's it's interesting at okay. least. Okay, maybe we forgot some questions. So, Borderless Podcast listeners, you know, uh, go to borderlesspodcast.com, click on Join Now, and we'll get you access to our Facebook page. We get you a free ebook, and we want you to rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. If you- Thanks for joining us for the Borderless Podcast, traveling, investing, and living beyond borders.